what I would like to ask is the next question on this, and it's about beginnings and endings of movies. And yeah. you place a great deal of emphasis on how the thing starts and how it ends. Would you like to explain that to us? Yes, sure. Um, you know, obviously film credits are normally what we see a film beginning with. And um, in, a, in, a, in an unusual way, even though we don't always pay attention to the film credits, they start to um, prep us for what the film is all about. Um, a film that I talked some years ago, it's actually based on a Shakespearean play called The Taming of the Shrew, and the movie's called Ten Things I Hate About You. Um, it's, it's a teen movie. And to make sure that the audience realizes that this is a young, funky movie, the, the font that they use is a very sort of jazzy, brightly colored font. And it jiggles around as the, you know, as the words come up. Um, the music is Bare Naked Ladies and it's, you know, it's high energy. In the background, we've got shots of Seattle because that's where it's set. So there's a lot of information coming to us when we think that this is just the setup, this is just the credits. Um, so beginnings, you know, the film actually starts even before we realize that it's beginning. Sometimes though, a director uses our, perhaps uses our expectation and sort of turns them on their head. So the most classic example of that for me is the James Bond movies, the Cubby, Cubby Broccoli's, in instant immersion into the action and think of something like quantum of solace where we start off with um this high action car chase through this tunnel and then across the building site and um cars go off and there's machine guns firing and cars fall off cliffs and then eventually james bond arrives in sienna and he goes into a covered um sort of avenue opens up the boot, uh, there's somebody inside it, and then it says Daniel Craig, and he shoots his gun, and the bullet turns into the title of the film, Quantum of Solace, and that's when the credits start. So, you know, beginnings are interesting. Yeah, so the, the start of the movie were, uh, were, may come in in a variety of ways, um, yes. using those things like fonts or special effects or... Uh, music, whatever. Lorinda, could yes. you just hold up your, yes. your book here on camera? Now, uh, do you see a parallel between the start of a movie and the start of a book? I mean, what? <laughs> yes. How, how are these related? Yes, um, if I speak from a personal point of view, um, and especially in recipe books, um, it's not just the title, which is, of course, very important as well, but um, it needs to grab me immediately. So I would usually look the front to see um, what's the author um, about in terms of their background, uh, where do they come from, that sort of thing. And then just summary at the back as well, uh, especially if one finds yourself in a very big bookshop or then even online to have a quick look. Because at the time when, when I uh, started to do the recipe book, there was only about 450 vegan recipe books out. Um, and a few years later, there were over 2,000. So, um, and then the font that I used as well uh, for myself, it also needs to, to be um, uh, readable very easily. But uh, especially in the recipe book, especially this thick recipe book, um, if I hold it sideways, you can see it's really very thick. Um, it's a lot of recipes to plow through if one wants to uh, refer to something or look up a recipe book. So the font needs to be easy on the eye. Um, I've often put the book down if the font is, uh, it's not just the, the size of it, but the type of font needs to be pleasing. Um, I prefer rounded letters um, that just looks sort of full. Uh, for me, it relates quite well to food, that sort of thing, the richness of that. Um, and then, um, yes, in the, at the end, the index um, is very important that I look as well to see uh, what's in a recipe book if I don't want to page through the whole thing. Well, I think uh, what I'm picking up here is that there's the, the, the creative process that gets involved with the start of the movie and the start of the book is they're not identical, but in some respects, they're trying to achieve the same thing they're trying to draw you in either it's to watch more or for you to actually open 
the book up. Yes. So there's a whole art in the start of things. Uh, and I just make the observation in um, a lot of sermons and, and church worship, um, not enough time is put into the art of how do you start it? What, what are you trying to achieve? Uh, whereas when you think of the huge uh, energy and forethought and money that goes into the making of those blockbuster movies that you mentioned, you can't leave anything to chance, can you? you you're constantly involved with this. Um, and that leads into the third area, which uh, I'm fascinated by, Elise. You've said that if you want to watch a movie well, you have to understand something about the editing process. Can you explain right. to us what you mean by that? And I should ask if anyone, uh, we've had four or five concurrent viewers, if anyone wants to, they can ask a question and I'll feed it out to Elise or Lorinda. 